So there was a question we were going to talk about today is how could we, how could we uh, disparate the funds? How could salary disparities between local and national and expatriates be reduced? So why do we need to reduce it? Because uh, first it's unfair for local uh, workers to be paid um, under uh, the pay um, of uh, expatriate. It's like uh, bad for motivation of local people. Yeah. So we thought um, about um, what is important. Why do we need to pay them more? So first it's because when you go overseas, you have some challenges, you have some differences from your own country. Uh, like for example, a lack of motivation. Why do you want to go to another country when you, are, when you feel comfortable at home and you don't need to move? Your employer will ask you to move, but you don't really want it. So that's a lack of motivation. And also, living in a foreign uh, environment is like um, something is, that is difficult because you need to move up from your house, you need to take away um, your family, you need to go with your family, your kids, find a new school, there's like some problems on the way. Yeah, yeah. And also, when you go to another country, maybe they don't speak the same language, so there's a language barrier. Like for example, Chinese is totally different from French. You need to, to learn to have some training. And there is cultural, cultural differences, which is really important in everyday life and also in the work. You don't have the same work uh, habits, same work way. So it's all these factors uh, make more difficult for more difficulties for people to go overseas. That's yeah. why you need to pay them more. Yeah, but yeah. You don't, uh, you're not forced to pay them more. You can find some solutions. So first solution is to replace salary compensation with someone something else. Like for example, training. You can give them free training, give your staff free training on learning languages or uh, formation to different um, <coughs> work habits, work way. And also you can give them a greater chances to have an upper, to have promotion. Like with bigger responsibility. So this could be uh, motivating for them to go overseas because they will grow faster. And also, when you are in another, in another country, you feel a little lost. So you need to uh, give them a mentor that can help them to learn how it works in the country and how to work well, so they can also grow faster. Mm -hmm. so the point is to grow faster rather than to have a huge way. Because we are in a, in a society that is not um, to add value more on your wallet, but to put value on yourself. And that's what is important now with the new kind of leadership. So this is really important to work on this rather than on the wages. Yeah, very good, very good. Okay, and now let us uh, take a look at the reduction in disparities. Uh, first of all, I think that this, uh, the reason why uh, companies hire expatriates is because there's a need to bridge the gap. I mean, they need to meet the demand. So, if you do not want uh, like to hire too many expatriates, first of all, you have to increase the competitiveness of local managers. If you put uh, allotments and like uh, the same percentage should be from the local, this is not going to work out. Sometimes you do need the, uh, the expatriates. So, the only way to reduce it is to increase the competitiveness of the local managers. And then the second part is the most important part is establish a common standards. When you look at the employee, you should not look at his passport. He should not be, hey, he's from this country, so you pay him more. He's a local, so we pay him less. It should be his ability. It should be built, uh, purely based on your abilities. So for the same work, for the same productivity, you should, it should be equal pay. So uh, there's a need to establish common standards uh, in a company. This will uh, eliminate any feeling of bias that maybe yeah, the company is treating the foreign expatriates more well than the locals. And then the third part is we should hire professional human resource agents. This uh, this way, uh, human resource agents can uh, like do do this the recruitment and the selection process freely without any bias, so that it should be equal. 
And the fourth part is there should be a clarity about the roles and purpose of assignments. Like, uh, why do you need this expatriates? Maybe this is to meet a certain demand. Maybe this guy is coming from America to instill the uh, what's the successful business plan over there, and you try to instill into the organization. This is why you need him. So this is his role. You are you set his roles clearly. Like this is his uh, level of operation. Like he does not as, uh, go outside his boundaries of his roles. Uh, when you make it clear the purpose and of every employee you hire, they do not uh, so it clears any misunderstanding. This is the conclusion of our group. What we think is that it should be a balance between expatriates and locals. There should not be an excess of expatriates and locals. Where there is a need for expatriates, then you use an expatriates. And where you can meet the demand through local, then you use the locals people. And the second point is that we believe there is a right place for both expatriates and locals. They are both an integral part of the organization. Sometimes you need the expatriates, sometimes you need the local know-how, and sometimes you need the expatriate professionalism in their own safe field. This is basically uh, our group's presentation. Thank you, guys. Very good. Thank you. Yeah. Very thoughtful, huh? Wonderful. So, firstly, why there is a certain disparity between the expatriates and the locals? So, uh, uh, of course, expatriate salaries have to correspond to the usual uh, salaries of in their own country. And, um, and so, uh, local companies uh, so have to convince especially uh, to work in their company, so the salary is uh, the argument, and uh, so it, it has to correspond with uh, the salary in uh, their own country and maybe uh, a higher one. And uh, expatriates often have uh, more experience than locals. Uh, that's why uh, companies, uh, Chinese companies, uh, want uh, uh, expatriates in their company. They have the experience and the competence, right? So what the company can change um, to uh, transfer uh, an employee uh, is expensive because um, it is good to know the, the employee and uh, the whole family. So uh, they can provide allowance for employees who are, um, because the employees are unfamiliar with the culture and uh, the customs of the country. And they can provide uh, company assistance programs like uh, language training and um, help them in finding uh, adequate housing, schools, or shopping areas. And we can also provide a uh, hardship or danger allowance. So um, companies offer an allowance or bonus to expatriates to uh, relocate to countries where living conditions are difficult and or dangerous. Uh, so uh, it's not the, for example, uh, if an employee of uh, Europe move in India, it's uh, really clear that it's not the same way of life. And um, difficult uh, or dangerous areas can be uh, like um, inadequate uh, housing or bad transportation or the lack of uh, health uh, facilities in the country. So uh, this allowance may range from 5% to 25% of the base pay. So um, it's important to um, to know the differences between the two countries uh, for the salaries of the other. Yeah. Okay, so what are the benefits in the company uh, success in uh, reducing the gap on the salaries? Uh, first, there are benefits about the workplace because it decreases uh, the stress on, on the workplace. Uh, local employees uh, feel uh, less stress because uh, they can have the same salary as uh, expatriates. Uh, it also improves the uh, workplace morale. Uh, there are also benefits uh, about the employees. Uh, I mean, the, the, it can increase the level of job satisfaction. They are more, um, how say, uh, they want more work, they, they are more invested uh, in the work. And it can also uh, improve their health and their well-being. They feel better when they go to work, and um, the, so they just want to work more. And that means that it can increase the company's productivity. That's why the company has to reduce uh, the gap between the salaries. Yeah, very good, very good. Good morning, everyone. I'm Pauline, and this is Carlos. We are from Group Three, so we are going to 
uh, share with you our findings on how can we uh, reduce the salary disparities between local and expats. We divide this into two segments to uh, answer this, uh, the questions. First, for locals, what should we do? Basically, we can provide a cash out uh, option for employees, for the local employees. For example, uh, in Singapore, there are some employees are uh, given gym membership, which are paid by the company, but some staff actually don't go to gym and they don't really find it useful for them. So, companies can give this um, option for the staff to cash out and in a way they will perceive that the staff now receive higher salary. Uh, the second one is to adjust the local employees' perception towards salary. First, uh, they should company can change uh, their perception to just focus on career advancement. That uh, companies are actually uh, giving international exposure or career advancement for them. And second, uh, companies should also let the employees know that when expats are paid higher, they are also expected to perform more things, and so is the contribution that um, matters. The third one is to reduce the fixed salary uh, in, for the local staff mm -hmm. and increase the performance-based salary. Mm -hmm. In a way, this can increase the total uh, remuneration package for the locals. Okay, next, how long? Uh -huh. Now, Thank for you. expatriates, so we have three points for that. One is to provide an option to substitute cash allowance with benefits. And the second one is to more stringent performance evaluation. Uh -huh. This is because um, it is expected that when expatriates uh, leave their home country, they are expected to work on more because of their benefits. So it is better to uh, conduct a more stringent performance or a more specific one. Then last but not least is to encourage them to show sensitivity to the locals regarding salary and benefits. Uh, this is the reason why uh, some locals uh, tend to uh, look out for their for the expatriates uh, leaving their home that their home company uh, because expatriates uh, uh, tend to sh uh, show off or brag about their benefits and um, expected salary because they have higher salary than the local ones. So I think it is better to show uh, some sensitivity or um, some yeah sensitivity to the locals regarding their salary and benefits. Mm -hmm. That's yeah, I think the good strategy to uh, substitute right substitute uh, some uh, monetary uh, pay right by uh, this uh, with the the non financial right. Uh, indirect uh, benefit program. Thank you. Yeah, yes, the question, and uh, we uh, thought that um, we would like to um, answer the question if we would like to reduce the salaries or not the gap between the locals and the expertise. And the answers to, to know not to reduce them is that the, the salaries compensation for the expertise for going abroad and they might have special knowledge and talented experiences which should be paid um, more than maybe the locals have and they, the expertise might be willing to work longer hours and their producti productivity might be higher than the locals and they also have to um, change currency sometimes. Sometimes it's paid in the local currency and sometimes the currency of their home country. And they also have to figure out with the tax issues if they are taxed uh, by the home country or the host country. And uh, they should be reduced, uh, the differences, because um, in the workplace there should be equal treatment for all employees. And the, to prevent social conflicts uh, between the workers, so it should, they should be reduced. And the expertise often have already some other benefits like accommodation or um, mentor or work or something else. And um, in the end, the salary depends in the position and the work task, what the expertise has in the company. Mm -hmm. So, possible solutions how to reduce that uh, gap uh, in the income? The, the, the first solution and the easiest one would be just to, to raise the, the salaries of uh, 
locals, but if the if the company is not able or is not willing to do that for, for some reason, uh, it can offer some other benefits for the local employees, for example, like maybe better health care or um, investing more money in their pension funds. Uh, the, the company can also provide educational programs for locals, some personal training and development career opportunities. Um, as I said, increase the, the local salary, uh, offer more working hours if they are willing to, to work more hours in order to make more money, or maybe they can pay them the same amount of money but uh, they, they decrease the number of working hours, which will mean that they work less for, for, for the same amount. Uh, some pension benefits and the um, company can also uh, offer them possibilities to, for moving up in the organization and career for their future maybe career development and yeah. Development. Yeah, very good. Yeah, very good. Yeah, thank you. So we are group number six. We're talking about the same issue as everyone else. How can salary disparities be uh, how can salary disparities between local na uh, nas local nationals and net wages be reduced? So typically, from my understanding, um, in the past, expatriates were paid more because they didn't want to leave their home country, move to somewhere new, and work in an environment that wasn't uh, comfortable for them. So a company would typically have to offer them more benefits, higher salary, um, stuff like that, to entice them to go somewhere else. Maybe currently that isn't necessarily the case. Maybe now the demand for jobs abroad is higher among employees in, say, the West. Um, but reasons for higher costs for hiring expatriate would be cost of life. So they would have to rent a new home. They would have to uh, be provided with their medical needs, their visa applications, uh, insurances. They would also have, typically if their family didn't come with them, then they would have a home back home uh, in their home country where their wife or husband would live, children. And if they did come with them, then the children's education in the new country would also have to be taken care of. Um, the second point would be tax. So whether or not they would have to pay tax in the country they're working in uh, currently, they would also have to pay a tax in their home country. So being taxed at two different rates by two different governments can take a big dent in your salary. Therefore, they should be paid more. Mm -hmm. And the third one would be the adjust of expenses depending on economic situations. So if an economy is improved in one region as opposed to another, their salary has to represent that, that difference. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then we have like four solutions to narrow the gap between uh, local staff and aspirates. Uh, first one is seek a common system that can be used as a part of the group to support consistency of growth on global location. And uh, second one is headquarters and the operating units are helping the work to share ideas and knowledge. As Tom has mentioned, we should adjust the different salary levels in different countries. So each branch should do a kind of marketing to know how is the local salary level. And the third one is performance major where it makes sense to the business. So in our opinion, I think it's quite fair to pay more to someone who's really had the ability to help the business to grow and earn profits. Yeah. So it really depends. And the fourth, give employees assistance that does not show up income. If you want, you don't want to let the employees feel that the gap between the salaries too much. You should uh, give them assistance like some other subsidiaries. Not really, we have to show up the difference on the income. So, mm, good so strategy, huh? <laughs> Yeah, so maybe the apparent uh, uh, number doesn't show this uh, yeah. large dispatch. Okay, thank you. <laughs> okay. Hey, we are group number two, and we are going to present the uh, topic of the salary dispatches between local nationals and expatriates be reduced. First of all, we want to mention which kind of benefits uh, all the expatriates can expect when they go at work, to work abroad. First of all, it's like the package uh, to Customize uh, um, to prove their relevant supports and focus on making the rel relocation process more efficient. 
And another benefit is like housing and cost living adjust adjustments and such job are locally adjusted, should be locally adjusted. And uh, many expectations give for accommodation package and some, uh, some support to provide children education and kindergartens. And also we found out that um, one example of unfair treatment. A survey by Gallup Business Review in March this year found Western expatriates in UAA earned around uh, 11,936 US dollars, on average 34 and 8 percent more than Asians who were paid at 8,000 and a half. And uh, another problem is that majority of Asian expatriates working in developed countries are available at lower salaries when compared to that of local workforce and expatriates from the advanced Western abroad. So we think that it's very unfair when the Asians go to developed countries, they expect lower salary than the people from Western world like Europe and America come to Asia like China and they expect more salaries. We found this fact very unfair and now Julia will present you how to solve the problem and uh, reduce the gap between salaries. Very good information, yeah, thank you. Uh, the first one is implementation program and program programs for enhancing social and cultural interaction between expatriate and local population. This means probably by means of uh, some seminars or uh, like uh, information, yeah, uh, educate uh, local people mm -hmm. about differences uh, and problems yeah. that expatriates can face in different countries. It is not so easy. Uh, probably for some locals who have never been to, uh, have never been abroad, they don't understand really what's the problem. Why should they get more money? Uh -huh. Why it's like uh, a little bit to decrease uh, yeah. local employees. The second one is governments should pay more effective role in creating a professional and social environment. Probably some more regulations or uh, rules or, or laws uh, implemented by government. Uh, the third one is uh, to have standard salary system within the company so that managers in the same rank get basically the same amount but at the same time increase in visible benefits for expatriates like housing, education for children, location fees, lighting goods, and so on, cars, uh, mm. transports. Very good <laughs> so, uh, suggestion, yeah, very good analysis and suggestion. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. First, the recruitment. Um, we believe that oh. we should go ahead hunting in lower GDP standard countries. Like, for example, in India, they are known for they are really good at mathematics and engineering. So, if you hire from India, then maybe you get a cheaper employee, but they have the same ability to work in that in that area, but you don't have to pay as much. And also, we have uh, you should go head hunting in places that don't have a high living expense. For example, in Germany and other European countries, it's higher expense. So obviously, if you want to employ from there, they would expect like higher salary. And then we think that we should uh, the book, the company should cover the foreigners' health care because health care abroad is pretty expensive, and the locals have it already. So. If you cover the health care, and maybe you can pay them less, but still, like, they would be willing to work for you because it's covered. And then we think that the, the boss should have, like, a more global mindset and ignore racism. Like, for example, here at Cram School, they would probably like to employ uh, white faces to promote their company, but that shouldn't really be the case because some of the other skins are good at teaching too, and even though they have different skin colors, doesn't mean that they're not capable. And then, like, like we should, we think that if we have an open market for foreigner for foreigners, like example, we issue more working visas, there will be more foreigners, and like we don't have to pay them as much because there would be more, and it's a supply demand. Yeah, thank you, thank you, yeah. So here are some uh, more specific ways for evaluation and compensation. 
so uh, the first you need to create a professional evaluation system because uh, some some uh, local staff they, they might think that they they get less compensation because they are local and some people get higher compensation because they are just because they are born and, and they think this is not fair so because so if we if we can uh, create some uh, criteria and, and make it and like like we, we have our ma a manager or some some people from other departments to evaluate the, the performance of all the steps and they and, and we do an annual test uh, to all the steps and then and then all and then we can give them the compensation based on their working ability and their performance and this is could be uh, more fair and more accepted by everyone. And second, uh, round trip ticket for uh, home home holiday visit. And I'm going to talk about this with uh, family depend dependents here. And because uh, of, of people from uh, people coming from other countries, they might have a more uh, inconvenient life life here. So we uh, come. The company have to uh, give more support to to these staffs and even their family, so that they can to make sure they have the same uh, competitive ability uh, with with other uh, staffs in in the company. And also, uh, we can set up a common working standard so that uh, every staffs in the in the company can can uh, can. Have the same uh, can can we should have a common working standard so that uh, every every uh, every staffs in the company have to abide by the same rule and they will not be uh, discriminated because mm -hmm. you, because you are local because you you are from overseas and language ability bonus and we can insist in. International companies of uh, people usually speak English to each other, but uh, their English ability might not be uh, very good. And so we can uh, give some uh, English lessons to local staffs and some local language training to, for, to these uh, people from overseas so that they, they can have a more uh, con it, it helps them to communicate communicate with each other. So yeah, that's that's all. Thank you. Yeah, very good. Yeah, good consideration, huh? Thank you. Uh, you can uh, d uh, deal with this problem from other uh, function, huh? And actually, uh, now in China, uh, the Taiwanese company uh, will pay the local talent and the Taiwanese talent at the same level. At the same level, right? At the same level, yeah. Same level. Uh, not only the mi the middle level, but also the executive level. Okay, now. However, uh, for the expatriate manager, they will be paid some from the home country, right? From Taiwan, especially for this, uh, 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 profit, this the the whole group profit sharing, yeah. So they will pay more. Yeah. And however, uh, when we consider this uh, uh, problem, you need to uh, consider the strategy. The strategy. If your company executes a localized uh, localized strategy, what it mean? It means that you should local leverage it the local talent, right? You could leverage the, 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 the host national. For what? <laughs> for local market, right? So if in this situation, you should pay more for the local talent because they, right? They expand the local market for you. Yeah, so I find that many uh, Taiwanese uh, uh, company, they pay more for local talent in China because the local uh, manager they huh, can make profit for you. So even this uh, local talent are pay more than 
the same label manager in Taiwan. Got it? Not only in China, but also in Taiwan. <laughs> yeah, this is a rich situation. So when you consider this question, you just consider what strategy your company used to compete in China market, in the foreign market. Okay? Yes. Okay. So thank you for all your uh, thoughtful uh, solutions.